they don't dig in too far into the body and they're not hard to uh, uh, manipulate and make everything look good. Okay, now I want to mirror these, so I'm going to double click this one and go to my bone tools and mirror around X and I can't pan, this one isn't like a dual mode type box so I, it's really kind of hard to manage this but I'm going to say mirror around X and the bone axis to flip is Y and the defaults work pretty good for this and I'm going to say OK and we'll double click this one now you can't use the regular mirror by the way did that go in the right place? Yes. Double click, mirror, OK. Double click, mirror, OK. So it really pays off to spend a little extra time on uh, laying these things out on one side before you bother to mirror. Let's go back to our top view. These need to move a little bit more. Something like that. This part's going to be a lot easier if you already have a character mesh. Problem is, when you're doing something like a spider, there's no guarantee that your character mesh is going to really work in reality because there's a lot of things you may not have thought through when you design the model. And the real uh, important aspect to a character like a spider is, does it move well? That's why I'm starting with the bones. And there's an interesting thing that happens when you go from model to unwrapping it, texturing it, rigging it, animating it, exporting it to a game engine, or whatever you do. You, it changes how you think of each cycle. Okay, so we've got uh, eight legs, basically the same leg, just copied and mirrored. The next thing to do is make these legs all children of this main body. So we're done here, and we can go to Select and Link, and grab the parent or child and drag it to the parent. So it's a press, drag, release from child to parent. So this process is called parenting. And I want to illustrate that a little bit more. Um, but before I do that, let me give some of these bones a name. It's always good with names on things in Max, especially when you get into skinning and rigging. So uh, what are we going to call this? I'm calling this root joint because that's what the Unity Game Engine prefers for a, uh, a main bone. Then for these other bones, I'm not going to name them all right now, but I want you to see kind of a, kind of a, a logic here. If this is, let's say this is the front of the spider and the fangs are up here and the tail sections over here. Well, this would be on the left side, right? This would be like left leg one, left leg two, left leg three, left leg four. This would be right one, right two, right three, right four. Isn't that logical? So I'm going to say that is uh, L1, and we'll call it shoulder, because it's kind of in a position like a shoulder bone would be. And the next one would be, logically, L1 thigh. Since it is a leg, that would be the upper part of the leg, right? And here might be L1 shin bone. So if that's the logic of that bone, what about this next bone? This would be L2, L2 shoulder, and L2 thigh and L2 shin and so forth. What about this right side? That would be R1 shoulder and then R1 thigh, R2 shoulder, R2 thigh. Let's do that one. R2. Okay, so that's the idea. Now that these are named and uh, parented to the body bone, let's go to our select by name button box here and you can see the hierarchy because I have display subtree turned on. And You can see root joint is kind of at the head of everything. There's that box we don't need anymore. And You can see the bones underneath that. And uh, Let's go here. You got L1 shoulder, L1 thigh, L1 shin. 
And then you've got these extra bones here at the bottom, this little nub, which we really don't even use. So it begs the question, why is that nub even there? Well, when you make a bone chain and you right click, it tells the bone chain that you're done, but it needs an extra bone at the end to define this little joint. So what's important on these bones is not where the bone is, but where the joints are in between the bones, because that's where the character is going to be bending, typically. So uh, now we're ready for the IK. Now IK stands for inverse kinematic, and so what it allows us to do is rather than bending the thigh and then the uh, shin and the foot or whatever, one thing at a time and trying to make this thing look realistic, we can create a little IK down here which will control the entire leg and we can basically, it's goal based motion so we can move the IK, move the whole leg. Let me show you what it looks like. I'll grab the uh, shoulder bone, animation, IK solvers, HI solver, grab the nub, go to another one, animation, IK, HI solver, grab the nub. Let's see what that does. If I go to, let's say, my right side view. By moving the IK, notice how the leg moves now. It's pretty decent movement, and that movement is going to be adequate for our spider. There's more you can do with rigging with bones than this, but this is good enough to get the spider taken care of. So let's uh, do a little bit more of that rigging. In fact, we can get rid of this box now. Animation IK Solvers, HI Solver. HI Solver stands for History Independent Solver. And it's almost the only one I use. Okay, those are all good. <clears throat> now let's talk about some of the basic animation to kind of test this thing out. Make sure that it's going to be a valid model before we invest time in in uh, finishing it up. So uh, I'll go to my right side view. Before I do that, I'll grab one of these legs. Right side view. Now it helps to have a little bit of a template uh, before we actually animate. Let me just slow down a little bit here. I'm going to go to box and make myself a box that is pretty much on the ground plane. And I'm going to make some more boxes. Let's say from here to here. This is kind of hard to uh, to do right now because we're doing two different animation cycles, so this is this is not going to be the perfect explanation for how to set up templates. But um, let me just finish this, and I'll explain what I'm trying to do here. Let's just move these out of the way. What I'm doing with these boxes is I'm giving myself some boundaries to move the legs within. So if I go back to the right side view, and I turn on auto key, and I want to move, let's say the right or the um, left front or the first leg on the left side, if I want to move that up, I can move it up. But as I start animating, it's good to know how far this thing is able to move so that it's not overlapping other legs or going too far and looking bad or something like that. So what I'm going to do is very simplistic animation right now just to get some basic concepts across and then we'll go to a little bit more advanced animation a little bit later. So on frame 20 let's say it goes forward and on frame 30 it comes down. <clears throat> 